Right, hi guys. Um, it's been a while since I've done a video, um, and I just wanted to update everybody on the uh, state of play with the, the central heating. Um, strangely, just as I was uh, setting the tripod up, uh, my phone went, and uh, the guy from National Grid um, was out the front, uh, needing to measure up and have a look where we want the uh, the new gas meter fitted. So. He reckons uh, four to six weeks it should all be installed and uh, we'll be ready to go. Um, probably it's going to take me four to six weeks to install all of the heating anyway, so uh, yeah, sounds like good timing. Um, I don't know whether I mentioned this before, but when the uh, when National Grid install the gas pipe, that's all they install. Uh, we've actually got to contact uh, British Gas or whoever we want to supply the gas and they will come out and fit the uh, fit the meter and connect it all and uh, just while we're on the subject of that the uh, the gas pipe has to be earth bonded uh, within the first 600 millimeters where it actually enters uh, into the property not the you know the boundary outside where it, so if we're bringing it in through one of the walls it must be earth bonded with 10 mm um, uh, cable Within that first 600, as it comes in through the wall, so it's just something to uh, to bear in mind. Um, so yeah, an update. Uh, excuse me, sniffing a bit today for some reason. My hay fever has uh, appeared out of the blue, where I haven't really suffered with it for a, a number of years. Um, so we've pretty much bought everything uh, that's required. There, there will of course be some bits and pieces that I've forgotten or bits and pieces that we actually need uh, to buy but all of the main items are here I've got a selection of items here on the bench that I thought just might be interesting to have a, have a closer look at um, we decided to buy the boiler uh, which as you know is the Worcester Bosch 29 CDI combi boiler we, we bought that locally um, because if anything is going to go wrong that might prove awkward uh, it was going to be the boiler and if we know we've bought it locally we can uh, you know pop back and sort out any issues if it was damaged or, or whatever uh, and in fact it was cheaper than buying it anywhere else even online uh, as you know I, I mentioned a company called uh, Mr Central Heating I found them uh, mentioned on a uh, forum for plumbing problems and have to say we've bought most of the the items from them uh, and eBay and uh, I don't normally rave about companies because generally the service you get these days you know really isn't up to much but within an hour of placing the order with them for the the, the what we did we decided not to place everything or well, not to order everything in one go we thought we would order the radiators first, see if that went okay, and then order everything else. The, the delivery charge was only, I think, five pounds. But within an hour of placing the order, we'd had a phone call from them. Uh, I think they're up in uh, sort of Birmingham area. They've got uh, st stores as well around that sort of area. So they phoned us within an hour, told us that the uh, radiators will be delivered on, I think it was... Uh, this Monday just gone and uh, they arrived uh, nice friendly guy nice van and uh, brought everything in I noticed that one of the rads had been damaged um, on the uh, back of this one you can probably see just up here the, the actual hanging brackets are covered by a bit of plastic and, and one of them had just been damaged you know it was no excuse me no big deal um, but they took that radiator straight back and uh, you know I was expecting there to be all sorts of issues getting it replaced but again within a couple of hours they'd phoned me and said well the new replacement radiator will, will be with you the next day which I thought was uh, you know pretty good and it was here the next day and uh, we actually placed another order for a load of other bits and pieces some of which you can see uh, over there and uh, they arrived uh, today um, so yeah Mr Central Heating .co .uk, I've got to say uh, excellent 100% uh, uh, to them for 
the way they've handled everything, the quality of everything it also seems brilliant. The radiators uh, were very, very cheap, but they've got a 10-year warranty, as you can see there. They're very heavy. Um, this is a double panel, double convector. Uh, hopefully you can see that. So that's their top of the range rad. We've got most of our rads in that type. We have got a, you know, some smaller ones in the single excuse me, single panel uh, type as well. Um, and they've been excellent. I thoroughly, thoroughly recommend them. So I thought it would be interesting just to look at uh, some of the other parts that we uh, decided to go for in the end. Oh, this hay fever is horrible today. So apologies again for that. Um, anyone that's watched these videos will remember that there's obviously condensate produced by the boiler and that needs to be drained uh, you know, normally into either one of your waste pipes in the house or into a drain gully outside. But unfortunately for us, the position of the boiler means we've got no easy access um, to a, a drain uh, or um, you know, waste pipe. So we've had to go for a condensate soak away, which uh, is uh, just one of these. I'll just take it out of its wrapper. So as you can see on, um, I don't know whether this will show up, Let me try and get the glare off of it. We basically need to dig a hole, put some limestone chippings in and then this condensate um, soak away goes in and then we surround it with the rest of the limestone chippings and connect it up to the boiler. Um, so yeah, you, you've got two entry points. There's in the side here or in the top. I'm not entirely sure which one to use uh, at the moment. And the pipe size is a 22, 32 or 40 mil. Um, so we will fit the largest size to minimize the risk of the condensate freezing, which would then produce an error on the boiler and, and shut it down. So recommendation is to go for the, the biggest pipe um, that you can which we'll do. We had a, a problem finding anywhere that stocked the limestone chippings. We obviously tried you know, the usual B&Q and Wicks and places like that uh, and they'd never heard of it. And then we popped over to our, uh, one of the building suppliers in Wellingborough called Higgins and had a chat with one of the guys there and, and he, didn't, he said they didn't stock it either but he went and asked if anyone else knew where it could be obtained from and in fact they do stock it they, they actually call it um, uh, condensate soak away chippings you know, it's sp specifically for the job they had four bags uh, which is probably too much but I thought we'd have the last four bags they had uh, just to make it as big as possible and uh, yeah and that was that so uh, we've got all those bags out in the garden another hole to dig um, one of the things that was you know, it's quite pricey. This uh, this FW100 we talked about uh, before. It's about 180 pounds. Now, as you know, most of you know, modern day electronics generally is really cheap and straight out of China. But this uh, this controller is, uh, you know, I think pretty pricey for for what it is. Um, but we've managed to find a uh, a new but opened one on eBay for 125 quid. That's just being shipped to us uh, at the moment. So 180 quid from you know online, most of the other dealers. But if you look around, uh, you might find one on eBay. Uh, and I think you know we've risked it. The, the guy says it's been fitted and taken straight out because it either wasn't suitable for the boiler or it wasn't what the customer wanted. I forget what the description said. Um, but you know we could have saved a lot of money there if it works. So fingers crossed on that one. Um, one of the other things that we, uh, where's that camera, there we go, that we wanted was some really good thermostatic valves and uh, I've discussed this before and we decided that after some research the, the best ones that you could buy 
were the uh, Drayton TR4s and um, that's what we've got here it's all on camera there we go so these have got flow although these uh, are by direction it doesn't matter which way you um, fit them uh, you know flow or return uh, there is a flow direction on on there so I guess it doesn't matter which way around it's either you know if that's going into the radiator at one end with the rad here or if you fit it the other end and that's coming out of the rad I think either option is fine um, the actual head itself is interesting because it's got a frost setting on there and it's very it's got a very nice movement with half stop positions all the way around up to the maximum and something else I read in the little leaflet that um, excuse me, this comes with is if you have a look underneath there are some pegs that you can pull out and reposition and that allows you to um, set the minimum and maximum positions that this can be adjusted to so I don't know perhaps if this was in a child's bedroom and they might fiddle with it you could set the you know the minimum to three and the maximum to four just to uh, make sure that it is on the setting that you you know need it to be on and uh, that just unscrews and you need to turn the head to maximum and uh, literally this just fits on there and you do up making sure that's to the front just do that up um, that's it obviously we're not going to talk about balancing and, and everything else uh, at this stage we'll probably do another video when I'm actually getting involved in doing all of that but uh, an interesting thing that you might want to consider uh, is as you know if, you, if you've seen the other videos our house is a bit of a uh, hodgepodge of um, you know boards and concrete and wonky walls and we're running 22 mil plastic feed and return pipes all around um, but I thought that if we had the valve coming straight down like that into you know through the floor the pipe below has got to be exactly in the right position as it comes straight down what I thought was if we have this valve as in the straight option which this is the angled option is the one where it comes down this is the straight option if we then fit where's that camera if I then fit a small piece of the pipe like that, we can adjust this to go down, uh, in, you know, upstairs. It will go through the plasterboard at an angle uh, like that. And downstairs with the wooden floor, we can probably just have it straight down like this. But that will allow me to the slight adjustment angle to, so it lines up with the 22 mil pipe, you know, straight underneath. So it seems to make a hell of a lot more sense to have that option because you can you know, put it out through the back or if the pipe's slightly out and it's a bit further forward you can adjust that. That just seemed to make a real good sense. What will happen then is you know underneath the 22mm pipe we've got uh, 22T with a 15mm uh, middle uh, section so you know, that will be down on the 22mm pipe there will be a 15mm coming out of that that will go into this and then straight into uh, the side um, so yeah I think that's absolutely perfect you can buy these TRV4s with the lock shield as a, uh, as a pack but um, again we use a company called Plumco in Wellingborough who have been again great really friendly helpful guys knowledgeable uh, prices have been really good I think we could have saved a tiny little bit of money on line if we bought these. But again, I'm just trying to support the local businesses where possible. 
obviously you can't do it if it's tens of pounds difference but we certainly were happy to spend a little bit extra uh, on these um, but they only supplied it like this in the box that you can uh, see there the, uh, the lock shield we just bought a standard straight lock shield again incredibly cheap uh, no issues with that again straight you can buy these in straight or angled and uh, we can put the uh, put that on the end and line it up with the uh, the second pipe um, in fact it's interesting because if you've got two 22 mil pipes running together side by side which I can't see any you know, that's how you would have to do it if you use the straight down ones one of the pipes is going to be out you know whether it's the, the feed or the return at the other end one of them will be uh, not quite right so you know I guess you could angle this you know if that was one of the angled ones then you could just have that angled on the rad but I think it'd look a bit stupid if it was a bit you know if it was like that on the rad or like that so anyway personal preference I guess um, servicing parts are available for these TRV4s which I thought was nice you can get a special tool to adjust in here uh, so you can leave the lock shield fully open and just get the temperature drop uh, at each end uh, sorted out just by adjusting in here and there's also a gland in here that is replaceable in fact Drayton supply uh, a special tool to adjust this and remove that seal so it's fully serviceable no issues uh, there I didn't order the tool I forgot to order it it's only a special plastic tool I'm sure it's only a couple of pounds but when we go down to the uh, to Plumco next week we will order uh, one of those or a couple probably just in case it uh, gets broken so oh yeah got to protect that um, the reason this is the probably the best on the market is because it uses a liquid uh, to sense the temperature and you know, then operate the, the valve most of the others you know they'll use wax or, or whatever the other options are but my research suggested that this is uh, the better of the, the TRVs so that's that I really didn't want to skimp on uh, the filtration uh, on this so we've gone for a Fernox TF1 again that's not in the camera there we go that's better I'll get that out in a minute again I you know I spent hours and hours looking at recommendations and what seems to be the easiest and uh, Mr. Hess, Mr. Central Heating uh, sold a pack so we've got the filter that goes on to the well actually we'll, we'll go through that in a minute and we have a corrosion uh, guard and a scale reducer and these are maintenance free items that just go on to oops in this case uh, this is an evolve scale reducer hopefully you can see that 15 mil fitting and uh, I recall early from earlier reading this it goes on to uh, limits the build up of scale on a heat exchanger and hot and cold pipes it changes the polarity to limit scale uh, and this must be installed no less than one meter away from the appliance so this is just going on to the 15 mil uh, cold water supply just with these compression fittings so that should be pretty straightforward um, this other one this corrosion guard is uh, slightly different and again compression fittings let me show you that and this one goes on to the um, the 22 mil um, heating pipe Trying to work out whether this goes on the. Okay, uh, you can connect it onto the inlet or outlet pipe of the boiler. Um, so yeah, whichever is uh, most convenient. Again, I think this is a zinc electrode and um, uh, another metal, probably copper, uh, to 
produce the effect that uh, they need to stop the corrosion. Uh, so again, they seem to be pretty good uh, products to uh, install. They are fit and forget, and uh, I think each had a two-year warranty. And then over to the main filter. This is the, as I say, the Fernox TF1. And what this does is you've got um, uh, this can go multiple ways, but the flow has to follow that uh, arrow. You can pull out this spring circlip and actually twist this body. So I think you can have it in you know multiple angles. You can have it you know like this, or in our case we'll have it you know just upright like that. It comes with obviously the washers that are in there, and these these are full bore. Uh, 22 mil um, fitting. Actually, that's not full bore, is it? The pipe works 22 mil, but that is not. Uh, that's reduced there from 22 mil. Uh, uh, not sure. I would have thought they would have used full bore uh, fittings, but whatever. Um, washers are in the box, but you literally just screw on. Screw these on at each end. I won't go through all the instructions, we may do another video on that. But the, the water's fed through here, there's a magnet in the top that comes down into this, so it attracts all any magnetic uh, material or attracted to the magnet material, steel, whatever, and, uh, and collects it around the magnet. Obviously, it spins out any dirt and muck that's in the, the system. And uh, when you want to service this, and I think it's generally once a year, but you know, if you're competent with this, you might want to do it every six months perhaps. All you do is turn the boiler off, wait until the, uh, the boiler is fully off, because you know, even where you've turned it off, the pump will often keep circulating the hot water until the water's cooled to a sufficient temperature. Um, and then you would just turn off these you would just turn both of these off like that. You can then pull out the magnet here. That will allow all the particles that were being suspended next to the magnet to fall into here. Uh, you would then release this cap. The cap has a built-in uh, tap for this uh, valve here and uh, with a bucket underneath this you can just fit that twist it opens up the valve there and then with the uh, return to the uh, boiler tap this one here you will just open that up and uh, that will just flush out all of the rubbish that's uh, that's in uh, collected in this so just do that till it's clear, turn the valve back off and uh, close this up like that and uh, fit this back on there. Then you can with either a flat bladed screwdriver or a uh, you know, valve key, you can just turn that air vent valve open a fraction and turn this valve on. Let this fill up with water from the, uh, the return pipe until it just hisses out of the top here and then nip that up. Then with the, uh, the one on the top you can just open that and you're back to normal and uh, good to go again. Obviously <laughs> remember to put the magnet back in and that really does just push into there. I haven't looked at the instructions properly for this, but this seems to come with some sort of uh, secure uh, security um, thing here. You can put it through the hole and I guess uh, it just shows whether it's been opened or not <laughs> since the last uh, time. But yeah, whatever. So there's two valves uh, included with this and um, that's about it really. Um, Again, it seemed to be the, 
the most recommended one. This top actually does come off as well. You need to put a wrench on there. You can take that all off and take it out and uh, clean inside if you uh, if you chose to. And as I said before, there is a spring um, a retention system, and there's a little dent in there. I don't know whether you can see. It. I can't tell on the viewfinder. Uh, yeah, just here. You can put a flat bladed screwdriver in there, pull out that spring and then that allows you to turn this into the uh, the number of positions that are available. So, yeah, pretty pleased with, uh, with all of that. Um, I'm trying to think if anything else has happened over the course of the last few weeks that might be interesting, but obviously I kept looking at prices online and until we were ready to order. And just chose you know, the best price and where we could afford to get them from. We did try and use the um, local supplier, but it, you know, for a lot of it, it just wasn't possible. In the end, I think we bought the boiler from them, uh, the TRVs, and uh, a few bits and pieces. We had to buy a full bore gas stopcock with uh, you know the lever saw, and the same for the 15 mil uh, water. Uh, from the mains, we got that from them, and everything else has been uh, been purchased online. I think mostly. Um, something else I would say is double and triple check the radiator sizes. Um, I, I double checked the list and realised that some of the rads were the wrong size. I don't know how I did it, so I wrote them out again, going room by room, uh, and I had twelve radiators listed. I then converted the, the sizes we needed in the room to the actual radiators uh, that we wanted online and for some reason I ended up with a list of 13. <laughs> but even more bizarrely, when I placed the order and they arrived and I counted them all in, I'd only ordered 10. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I don't know what happened. So part of the order that came today was for another two uh, 1200 by 600 uh, rads. So, yeah. Um, and that's it really, we've, um, uh, we've got an RCD uh, unit to connect the boiler to for the mains. Um, I've got 20 metres of 10 mil square earth bonding cable. We're going to run that from uh, the boiler gas pipe to the uh, fuse box, the consumer unit, and cross bond to all the other copper pipes on, you know, on the boiler although it seems that it's not a requirement. Uh, I will mention a book, uh, it was a Kindle edition uh, book that I purchased. Um, I'll probably put a link uh, below this video for that because it's been a huge help. I can't even remember the name of it at the moment but I'll, I'll add it to the, the list. Um, the regulations seem to be interpreted differently by plumbers and differently by electricians and, and even then it does seem to be some room to manoeuvre on these regulations, which I just don't get at all. You know, either it's right this way or it's not, but it seems to be a minefield. Not something I'd recommend uh, anyone getting into, particularly just get uh, just get somebody qualified in to uh, you know to to do the wiring, and uh, and obviously you've got to have a gas safe engineer to commission and connect everything up which we will uh, we will have obviously after I've done the bulk of the work um, so yeah that's it really uh, that's just a bit of an update pretty much all the parts are here now I've just had a quick look at some of the more interesting bits um, when I get the boiler out and uh, have a closer look at that I'll probably film that for you so you know what's in the the boiler pack and uh, probably just film some more interesting bits as we go. I'm starting upstairs, I'm going to go into the loft space uh, and uh, you know, put the upstairs rads in first and run the pipe round. Things still to order, uh, well, I've just ordered it, I've ordered some uh, insulation for the pipes in the loft, in fact all the pipes will be insulated, I've ordered about 100 metres um, it does seem to be a, a requirement regulation wise for from from my what I've read, it's 25 mil thick insulation, but it costs hundreds of pounds. So we've gone with uh, the 13 mil um, size, uh, you know, and hopefully that will be uh, that will do the job. 
Um, so yeah, that's it. Thanks for watching. I know it's kind of gone on a bit again, but I just thought it might be interesting to anyone who is uh, contemplating installing their own central heating at some point. And uh, well, I'll update you again. Um, I don't know, probably during the week when we actually uh, have got the insulation and I actually start work. Thanks for watching.